Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, common test methods for measuring dielectric constant. And here's your host, John Coonrod. Welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a market development engineer and I am with Rogers Corporation with the Advanced Circuit Materials Division. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about uh, test methods that are used to determine the dielectric constant of circuit materials used in the microwave or high frequency industry. Now there's no shortage of test methods. Uh, there's many different types of test methods for testing uh, high frequency materials. Uh, there's test methods been defined by IPC, IEEE's defined test methods, there's ANSI test methods, there's universities that's defined their own test methods, uh, OEMs, so there's really no lack of test methods. And uh, each test method has its own set of pros and cons or capabilities and limits. Now, there is no perfect test method. That's what it comes right down to. And if you have the same piece of material that's tested with two different test methods, you can get two different results. And actually, those two different results will actually be the right answer. Or one test method can exercise the material one way different than the other material or the other test method. There are many uh, different test methods. And the following slide has a summary of the four most common test methods used in the high frequency industry. So the uh, clamp strip line test is a, a depiction of that in the upper left hand corner and this is a test that is used to test raw substrate in large volume and very quickly and essentially what happens is the copper clad laminate has all the copper etched off and the dielectric material itself is tested in a clamping fixture. The clamps are shown to the left and the right and they have a ground potential and in between that in the middle is a resonator circuit or resonator card and you put the samples to be tested on both sides of this resonator card, clamp the ground planes together and now you have a strip line structure of ground signal ground and you excite the resonator and you look for center frequency and determine the dielectric count. Now the test method below that, the uh, split post dielectric resonator, SPDR, that is a perturbation resonator method where you first test the empty resonator as the reference or baseline and then you put a material in there to test and this material will shift the center frequency in the Q and that will cause, uh, that, that actually that shift will allow you to determine the dielectric constant of the material that was introduced into the resonator. Now the, the uh, test method on the upper right is FSR and that stands for full sheet resonance and really what that's doing is testing the copper clad laminate itself. And the copper clad laminate is behaving as a loaded parallel plate waveguide and we're establishing a standing wave and at the center frequency of that standing wave that resonant peak can be established and knowing the dimensions of the panel you can then calculate the dielectric constant of the material. And then finally, the bottom right, the microstrip differential phase length method. This method is using two different transmission lines. They're microstrip transmission lines, and they're identical in every way except for the length of the circuits. And the length uh, and measuring the circuits for phase response and understanding the dimensions of the circuit, you can back calculate the dielectric constant of the material itself. Now, as a summary of the four test methods, I'm going to talk about the clamp strip line test first. And the clamp strip line test is a good test for what we do, and we have to test literally hundreds of samples a day. And uh, in this test, it's a fixturing test where we can put the material in the fixture, clamp it, test it, and then bring more samples in right after that in just a matter of a minute or two. Now, the benefit to this is this test method is very good repeatability, has very good repeatability, very good reliability, and we use it to understand process control and quality control of our materials. The drawback is this is a fixture that is clamped together and there is some entrapped air. And that entrapped air is not indicative of a circuit, so it can report a slightly different dielectric constant in this test than an actual circuit would. The other test method called FSR, full sheet resonance, that test is when you actually test the copper clad panel itself and sometimes it's advantageous to test the panel before the circuit is actually fabricated. So the circuits being fabricated on the panel with a known dielectric constant of that panel is sometimes advantageous. Now this test is testing the z-axis of the material or the thickness axis for dielectric constant. It's also a low frequency test, generally around 100 megahertz to 200 megahertz. And because of that, there's some uh, disadvantage there because you're not capturing some of the high frequency effects of the dielectric constant testing. The SPDR test, that is uh, a test that's actually testing the XY plane of the material. And sometimes the combination is used between the results of the SPDR test and the FSR test, where the FSR test is 
evaluating the z-axis of the material. The SPDR test is evaluating the XY plane. And the combination of that information can tell you how anisotropic the material is. Now the drawback to the SPDR is really the accuracy of it is very dependent on how accurate you can measure the thickness of the sample. And then finally, the microstrip differential phase length method. Uh, this test is a really good test for accuracy for the real world because you're actually testing actual circuits. And this is not a test of different resonators or fixtures. This is testing live circuits. Now the drawback is uh, it's very time consuming. So it takes time to design the circuits, takes time to build them, test them. Uh, but once you have the data, it's very good data because it's based on real circuits. And also, this data is wideband, so it gives you information across a wide range of frequencies. Now, the following slide shows a couple of screenshots of testing using the clamp strip line test and the microstrip differential phase length test. This slide shows in the upper left corner the clamp strip line test and the screenshot kind of in the background is over a wide frequency range and you can see that there's uh, five nodes or peaks that are shown here. Generally you can see that I've zoned, uh, zoomed in to node 4 and we generally do test node 4 which is roughly 10 gigahertz. And then the bottom right graph is actually the results of the microstrip differential phase length method. And here you can see that we're getting a dielectric constant versus frequency curve. So as the resonators give you just dielectric constant for a specific frequency, the uh, microstrip differential phase length is beneficial because it gives you dielectric constant over a very wide range of frequencies. That concludes this visit to Coonrod's Corner and thank you very much for your attention. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.